Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Crawl Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, we're starting off with launching a resupply mission for the Bullwinkle Amus around Minmus because it's running out of food, water, and oxygen in 60 days. We've actually got plenty of time. But we do want to get to some Drez launches and those will be happening in 53 days so we might as well get this resupply mission done first. We also have to deal with that Class D asteroid that we've wrangled and we are supposed to eject out of the Kerbal system. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have enough Delta V on it right now. And uh, it'll be tough to get anything over there that will have enough Delta V. So we'll take a look at the situation there, see if we can plot something where it encounters Jewel. But it doesn't look like it has enough Delta V to actually encounter Jewel right now. So, yeah, that's the situation there. Then the problem with that is, of course, we've got a very lucrative contract and uh, like two million of our funds right now are from that contract so we'll take a pretty big hit to our budget and reputation if we fail it but uh, well, let's get this done first and uh, I'll probably have to restart the game before launching anything else you know how that goes so uh, yeah so very simple package about 700 days for three Kerbals I don't know how many Kerbals are on the Bullwinkle Amus but it should be enough Okay, so here we are. I'm not going to waste any time. We'll launch at night time this time. So, uh, yeah, throttle up, SAS on. And, of course, this is the Strider SL. And so, launch. Off it goes. So I've thought about what I want to do with Drez, obviously. We're going to land a fuel refinery on the surface of Drez. It'll be able to drill for water and convert to fuel and oxidizer. And uh, after doing that, we'll also build our base around there. So I'm envisioning something like our moon base, except maybe not all attached together uh, like we had with KAS. Uh, that might not be safe. So I'll have to think about how to really build the base. Maybe independent modules. I've already got a new orange that uh, will drop the bases, uh, drop the base modules off on Drez and then fly back to orbit just like the orange around the moon did. Except it's a little bit different in that it has RTGs instead of solar panels, so that'll be beneficial. Now that we've unlocked RTGs, but that does make it more expensive. We'll probably send more than one. One with each of the initial base modules so that we have a few waiting for further missions. We'll also have to send a larger resupply mission and refueling mission over to the Drez Oasis. I've already built some of this and put it on various Strider launchers. I don't know if I should think up a more efficient way of doing these things because we might be budget strapped soon. Okay. And waiting for booster. Okay. Set and ignition. Alright, the booster should be safe and recovered. We should be alright for fairing separation. Okay. Just an LV909 on the probe. I didn't go too fancy with anything. I did put a waste container, just in case. Maybe we can recycle the waste. Oh, fudge. Dang it, I forgot that... See, I've been playing too much Realism Overhaul. I forgot the decoupler on the fairing. Uh, in Realism Overhaul, these have decouplers. Here, they do not. So that's a bit of a problem. Let's see if that part can make our transfer over, but it's still going to be very cumbersome. Well, I really want to have this uh, this portion deorbit, especially if anything goes wrong. But I guess we we, we should make full orbit. Let, let let's hold it there and circularize. I mean, then maybe I don't know what we can do with all this. Uh bad start okay that's good enough 
let's uh, see what happens. Okay, let me shut down this engine. Activate this engine. So we can jettison this one, we can't jettison that one. That's weird. I'm just trying to blow this up. Temperature is going up. Uh, while that's going on, I'm gonna pump fuel up from the bottom to the top. So that I can. Oh, stop, stop. Uh, the other way around. Well, I can't see what temperature it's going at because I'm still trying to use this fuel in order to do the trick. Come on, fairing. Ah, uh, it's steady at 616 Celsius, uh, Celsius, yeah. This is not working out. And boy, did it go down quickly. Really? Well, I guess this is why they Im improved the the heat situation in, in the newer version. Let's see if pumping the fuel down and shutting this down. Well, it looks like it'll be enough. Alright, let's go. So I guess I'll say jettison this engine when I'm finally through with making Oberon Minmus and then we can use the RCS for the rest, or matching orbits with the target and then we'll use RCS for the rest. We'll be going pretty fast at the Minmus encounter because we've got a fast approach here. Okay, we also had a little moon thing going there too. Yeah, there's some moon possibilities, but we don't need them. Alright, that should do. Let's go for 400 kilometers until we figure out exactly how we're matching up with the Bullwinkle A Moose. Well, so in hindsight, uh, we had an extra engine that we didn't need. <laughs> the LV-909 was superfluous. Oh well. See, we really need to trim down. We've been very, very loose with our budget so far. We might be getting into a, back into the bad old times of having to watch our budget. Okay, uh, we've got something there. Tweaking here and tweaking there gets us an encounter. Uh, let me go with 3.7 kilometers right now. We're, we're not even close to where we need to be for that. So Then we'll look into dumping the LV-909 in order to separate off the useless stage. And we are also correcting part of our inclination, but more importantly, trying to get close to the target. 33 kilometers is a bit bad. Alright, let's see if we can fix that. Probably the best place to do that is here. I'll take 6.1. Really settling for less than I usually do, but I want to get this done quick. Okay, there's the Bullwinkle A Moose, and I want to get to negative relative velocity with it. So, uh, after I do this burn, I'm going to try and use this jettison function and see if that works. I've never tried that before, ever. So, hmm. We've got 120 units of mod propellant up here. That should be enough to dock. Okay, that did absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, that was anticlimactic. Okay, right. Well, with this unwieldy thing and the RCS ports placed badly, you will need the help of the Bullwinkle A Moose to actually dock, I think. You'll need to orient properly. It's already got stuff docked with it. Yeah, open that shield. It's got that spot open. 
be real convenient if we were already approaching that spot, but it doesn't look like it. Okay, less than a minute away. Can I target the docking port? Yes, I can. Alright, we need to slow down and adjust our velocity. Well, that gets us pretty well lined up. 10 meters though, but you can't always trust that close approach distance. Everything looks fine, electric charge is still good. Okay. We have connection and it is docked. So I think Bullwinkle Amos resupply is done. And they have five crews, so it's 485 days. Still pretty good. Still pretty good. The next thing up would be the CRT around Duna with one crew. We do need to figure out what to do about that. When, when is the next Duna transfer point? Nine days. Uh-oh. I think we have a change of plans. It looks like I need to think about what to do about Duna, huh? Ah. Well, um, hold on. Let me restart the game. Because I'm at 3.5 gigabytes of RAM right now. And so I'm threatening a crash on any scene change at this point. We'll have to deal with the space tug after the Duna thing. So let's, we'll, once I get back, we'll take a peek at the CRT around Duna and see what we can do about that. If it turns out that I can't dock it with something else to save it, we'll need to send it su some supplies. And so that's going to be, uh, well, I mean, it's not going to be very different from this supply vessel, actually. Except we'll need to put a docking port in between the, not the docking port. A, uh, a decoupler between the LV-99 and the fairing base. Okay. Okay, so here is the CRT around Duna with Jed and Kerman. And as you can see, we already docked it to this refueling vessel. And so it's got fuel. It's actually full of fuel. But it doesn't have as much food, water, and oxygen. That is a little bit short right now. Yep, 112 days. So uh, let's take a look at the grander situation. We've got a Duna refinery out there. This is here. And then there's Duna Station 1. And then another half moo thing. Doesn't look like we've got a Bullwinkle around. The Duna Refinery is probably the equivalent. Alright, I'm gonna risk uh, hopping between vessels here. Let's check out what the situation is with the Duna Refinery. Well, let's see how much food, water, and oxygen it might have here. Duna Station 1 has 6 crew and 624 days. Well, an extra crew member won't uh, hurt that too much, will it? Duna Refinery has 3 crew and a... Wow. 1,120 days. Let's take a look at it though. It might be one of those deceptive situations. You know, with all that water remaining, who knows, and electricity remaining is knit. We haven't checked on it for a long time, it looks like. Not quite as long as we haven't checked on the Dred CRT though. Hmm. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at the Duna Refinery and maybe this can rendezvous with that. Um, it's docked with that little half moo, so that's a little bit inconvenient. Basically, I'm trying to avoid having to send anything out here to Duna on this run. Mm, this doesn't look like it can dock with, uh, I mean these aren't normal docking ports, these are little flex tubes. We don't have any normal docking ports on here. No wonder it has so much food, water, and oxygen. Nothing was able to dock to it in order to set stuff up. Now, we could use these pipe endpoints or we could do something else using EVA but I'd like a firm connection and this doesn't this looks like it should land we should definitely land this but I guess there's no place to land it it needs water or maybe ore but the sender module converts water to LFO and all the other stuff I don't think it can use ore to do that it doesn't have an ore tank anyway
yeah, this is definitely supposed to land somewhere, but uh, I guess this is the main contender. I, I've already got something like this planned for Drez, but we should probably send this over to Drez as well. Um, I don't know how much actual fuel it has, though. It seems pretty bereft of fuel. It could convert the water to fuel, but that conversion hasn't been particularly great so far. Let's say we start LFO. Oh, look at the water go away. Mm. 42 units of water gives us less than 3 units of liquid fuel and oxidizer. So, yeah, we're not really refueling at a very high pace. Let's stop that. No wonder the other one ran out. It doesn't tell me how much delta V I have because it's oriented wrong. Um, I wish I had put a controller or at least a docking port on top so that I can control from that and get the delta V reading, but I can't. Okay, but this is clearly not the thing to dock the CRT to. Let's check Duna Station 1. Ah, uh, well, but Duna Station 1's docking port is already occupied by this resupply vessel. That's inconvenient, and it does... Well, we can move the supplies in, I suppose. Let's see... Let's see if we can move all the supplies in, then then we can have the CRT dock up with it. And maybe deorbit that thing. Okay, well, it looks like we can't fit everything in. These, this is a waste container back here, and then this is full, 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 full. This is empty, empty, but not empty. Still some left. So, we'll have to wait, and I guess the... Duna CRT does have some, I mean, it does have the 112 days, so we'll wait until these guys consume the remaining stuff from this container, and then we can deorbit this and move the CRT in. So I won't deal with that right now. Let me uh, set an alarm for it, because we certainly don't want any Kerbals to perish from lack of supplies. So I'm gonna say Duna CRT dock to Duna station one add that alarm okay so we'll deal with that over there let's check out this I don't know if I want to do anything else with Duna on this transfer point let me turn to the space tug first and then I'll think about that now it's not time for us to do anything but um, maybe I can plot something actually I can't plot anything uh, we are actually just out of supplies I mean we don't have any liquid fuel or oxidizer or mop propellant we actually ran out of everything I suppose I was supposed to send something out to this at this point um, well at that point it'd be I guess is it gonna pass close to Kerbin if it passes close to Kerbin maybe we can send something else well, I can't do any maneuver doesn't look like it's approaching Kerbin at all. Kerbin's going faster, so it'll probably be ahead of us. Hmm. Let me take a look at that contract again. So, failure will cost us 1.7 million. I guess we can weather that. Too bad we won't get the science. And then 2,000 rep lost. I don't even know what the actual number over here is, but it seems like a pretty big hit. If we cancel contract now, we still got six years. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that on the back burner. These are all active. We still need to explore Jewel, but there's no deadline for that. Uh, we need to... That's amazing. Transmit or recover scientific data from space around Jewel we haven't had. Haven't done. Plan a flag on Duna. Hasn't been completed. Okay, um, why don't I deal with some of these? Uh, let's start with the ever-present science day from space around the moon. Then I'll jump to something around Jewel to do some scientific data there. I'm sure I have something, right? Or not? I don't know. Um, plant flag on Duna sounds like what the CRT is supposed to do. Yeah. Okay, uh, so change of plans. I was planning to launch some stuff to Drez, but... Since we're going to miss out on this contract, I wanted to fulfill some of the others. Mm -hmm. That's 1,156 prestige units. 
Uh, maybe, I don't know if I should wait until after I get the hit from the other one. Uh, this one. That'll make up for it. But, uh, oh, well, anyway, uh, let me hop on over to something around the moon. Well, this is an ancient moon scanner. I think it was like the second thing I launched. In fact, it's got parts from packs that I've deleted most of the parts of. Um, review data, magnetometer. Well, we've got some magnetometer information. Let's transmit that. Contract complete. Okay, science data from space around the moon. That's uh, recovery information. Okay, um, so let me take a look again at the CRT, this time with an eye for whether it can land on the surface of Duna and complete that contract by planting a flag. Well, one way or another, we're going to have to undock from this thing, so I guess now's the time. Let me uh, make sure we've got, well, we've got pretty much all the mob that we need. Okay, uh, let's undock. There's no other supplies over here, is there? Doesn't seem that way. Okay, and undock. Right, so 3,685, that's good enough. We've got parachutes. Don't have an indicator of whether it's safe to deploy them or not, but we've got parachutes. Yeah, the contract didn't say we had to go in any special place around Duna. Just plant a flag on Duna. That's it. I think we've got plenty enough Delta V for that. Okay, Jenin. I think uh, I think we gotta plant a flag on Duna, and we'll have you sit there until you dock with the Duna. It's actually uh, Duna CRT to Duna Station One. I put DRT for some reason. That's all right. We know what we're talking about. Retrograde, please. Okay, that should be fine. Not bumping into anything. Definitely within the atmosphere. Now, I forget about uh, the proper altitudes to do everything in this version. Actually, I don't particularly know the proper altitudes in the latest version either. So, go figure. We'll have to be prepared for real shoots to, like, fail on us. I don't know when I'll be able to deploy them safely. Now, of course, they can't do the full job either. Okay, here we go. We're not going that fast. It shouldn't be a whole lot of heat. We could probably just, you know, land without the parachutes at all. Let's see, can we get a te temperature thing? Yeah. Temperature scan. Can we transmit? Yes, we can. We've gotten science. Well, I don't think it's a good idea to try and deploy the real shoots parachutes before hitting the speed of sound, and we're three times the speed of sound right now. Well, that'd be on curb and sea level. I mean, it's a little bit different on Duna and Vacuum, but I don't know the number that would be safe to deploy the parachutes at. So probably we're going to use a lot of engine power to figure this out. Okay, we will, we're we definitely below the speed of sound now, but I don't know if I should even bother with the parachutes. I am going to bother with the landing gear though. It is a bit of a wobbly looking thing. Doesn't look like it will land firmly on its feet. It does have some risk of tipping over. No big reaction wheel on it or anything. I'll probably use RCS to try and stabilize on the ground. I don't think it's. I mean, it's obviously not as power as powerful as the Werner thrusters for that purpose. Well, I see my shadow over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't tip. Don't tip. And... Uh, a bit of a slope. Okay. 
All right. RCS off. We seem to be stable. Okay. Well, let's get the ladder down. The ladder is extended, not quite to the ground. Jetan, it might be a big hop for you at the bottom there. Uh, let's get the solar panels out so that while he's waiting on the ground here, because we'll have him camp out, he will have power. That's very important. Oh, I could have just pressed the action group. I'm pretty sure they're action group to one. But anyway. We actually lost the solar panel there. Alright, EVA, Jedin. Okay, that's good enough. Plant your flag. Alright. So, uh, Jedan on Duna, and I'll say, I can't believe it took us this long to plant a flag on Duna. Indeed. Okay, well, uh, other stuff takes surface sample. Alright, keep that data. EVA report. Uh, well, keep it for now. We'll transmit it once you get back in the pod. You know, hop up and... Okay, not close enough. Hop up. Okay, grab. There you go. Board. No, no. Up, up, up board. Okay, and let's transmit the one that we can transmit. Yep, surface sample will hold off on. So keep data. Okay, I hope you will be alright, Jedan. Maybe it's safer to get him back into orbit. Let's see, Tuna Station 1. Relatively equatorial. Which way around is it going though? Oh, it's going eastward. Okay, we'll get him back into orbit. It's safer that way. That way he'll remain recharged. He'll be more reliably charged up. I don't know how long his charge will hold out on the nighttime side, for instance. Let's turn off the lights. And up we go. Oh no! Shoot! There goes the whole reliably thing. Hmm. Well, now we have to dock him with Duna Station. I forgot about the whole, you know, solar panels don't like atmosphere thing. Well, this was not what I was intending on doing in this episode, but, you know, Judy calls, I suppose. So we are going to dock this with Duna Station 1 in deorbit, even though it still has some supplies left to orbit that other module. Or we could deorbit the fuel pack on this station. It's a complicated business. Uh, I'll take a look at the situation once we get there. Okay, well that gets us barely within render range, but uh, we can do that set of maneuvers pretty easily. And quickly, so that we don't run out of electric charge. I have a plan. I think uh, we'll remove the supply vessel, dock this up, and then uh, transfer fuel into this from the, the leftover stage on the other end of the station, uh, get rid of that, and then dock up the supply vessel to that end of the station instead. So yeah, you can see uh, this actually has a big docking port on the tail there. This has some fuel left over, but we can transfer that into the CRT and then move this over onto that side, getting rid of it. Um, we should deorbit it. 
but it doesn't have an independent controller on it, so we can't. Alright, it still has mob propellant, so it can back away. Let's not have it go away too far, so once it's left enough room for the other vessel to do its docking maneuver, I'll nullify its velocity. Okay, now we can set that as a target. Going to use the parallel function on Smart ASS to help me out here. Okay, looking good, just dropping right in here. I'm not gonna try and line up the windows on the CRTs. There's one over there too. Okay, looking good. Uh, well, we are trying to get a little further down here. Okay, I guess I am trying to line up the the pods after all. Okay, we have connection and docking. Now let me transfer fuel from that side into the CRT tank. Okay, that's done. We will dispose of that portion. Decouple node. We'll use the RCS on the station to, whoop, wrong way, pull away from that. Going to actually have the station flip around. Gonna control from here. Uh, I hope you don't get too close to that thing. Okay. Right, that leaves us lined up just fine. Let's have the resupply vessel dock on that side. We want to control from here this time. Okay, coming close now within 10 meters. This is practically a decent module for the station, really. Until we send something else with a 2.5 meter form factor. Okay, that should be good. Come on. Oh, bump. And... Bump again. And... Magnetism. All right. So how are, how are we? We have 550 days for seven crew. That's a lot of crew members on this station. Okay, well, there they are. All right, I wanted to see if anything could do the Jewel thing. Uh, transmit or recover scientific data around Jewel. I'm shocked that we haven't done that already. Let's see. Now, everything is probably around one of the moons of Jewel. I don't think there's anything just lingering about. Land on Paul and transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of Paul. Well, we've got the Paul water fountain, but I don't want to use that for that purpose. Um, yeah, there just isn't anything sort of sitting out in the middle of nowhere, is there? I guess I'll hold off on that. We've got everything pretty well situated. Okay, well, I think that does it for me for this episode. Not what I wanted to do, but, you know, uh, we did do a resupply mission to the Bullwinkle A. Moose around Minmus. We managed to uh, get a flag planted on Duna, dock back up with this station, rearrange things a little bit, and uh, we are in a better place for doing the missions to Drez. I've basically abandoned the space tug with the asteroid connected to it. We'll, if I decide that I want to tackle that after we do the Drez stuff, that's fine. 
I don't envision that we're going to be sending anything else to Duna. Uh, next, uh, yeah, next time will be a launch episode. All right, so uh, I already have the Drez rockets prepared, but I'm, I'm gonna have to think about Duna. Maybe I'll just have another supply vessel, maybe something a little bit more complicated. All right, so on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.